Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're checking out this, the Ender 3 V3 SE from Creality. It is a 3D printer. We've done a few reviews of Creality products on this channel. Check out those below. This is what I would call the easy, out of the box, ready to go 3D printing device. And of course, big thanks to Creality for sending me this for review. And make sure to like and subscribe. We'll get started by rolling the intro. Okay, if you've checked out the V3 before, you will see plenty of similarities, but I wanna take you through what makes this one a little bit more unique because this is one of my favorite ones so far. It's only just gotten so much easier to print, but I'll talk about my experience in a second. First of all, it comes in four parts or modules as you wanna call them. It's very easy to assemble. There's a couple of screws. It's not what it used to be. The Ender V3, the original one, was a hassle to put together. It has very fast printing speeds. Not really noticeable if you're just plug in and play, but you can turn up that speed and you'll still get very good prints. The Y axis is a dual linear shaft. You will notice that there's not two motors on each side. Not a bad thing, but I do generally like to have two motors, but it does mean it's a little bit less loud. It doesn't make that whiny noise as if it's connecting to dial up. It also has a Sprite Direct extruder, which is massive. The worst thing about printers back in the day is that plastic tube to another motor that pushes your filament through into the head and all the time it would get stuck. So a direct drive is awesome and it makes the prints a lot better. It makes it actually come out at the speed that you want. Overall, it's really the way to go with 3D printers. Now, the big thing about this one is it has auto leveling. And again, it's worry free as Creality says. And I have to admit, level once, off you go, it's perfect. No more worrying about the first layer. So if you're a 3D printing enthusiast and you want a workhorse that just does what you send to it, overall, the auto leveling feature is fantastic. That first layer always stuck straight to the platform. Now I wanna talk about stability with this product. It is really good. It has very thick rubber feet on the bottom and everything seems to be nicely, tightly manufactured. This is a car I printed for my son and it's come out beautifully. And you know that old ad that, you know, you wouldn't steal a car or you wouldn't download a car? Well, I downloaded the car and printed it. So there it is. In any case, it also has auto filament loading and unloading. It's really easy. The little button, you hold it, pull it out and put the next one in and it pushes it straight through. Fantastic. If we have a quick look over here, Creality has been providing very uh, environmentally friendly packaging for their filament. And I think the industry is following along. It's old cardboard wheels now rather than plastic, which is great. At the end of the day, you know, if you're just printing plastic, you're creating more crap. You can always melted down but that's not really what people do so it's good to see at least these reels over here are not just plastic waste anymore i'm not saying 3d printing is wasteful but kind of is this one prints 220 mil by 220 by 250 height so it's a little bit smaller not a lot but most of the things that you're going to print on this are small they're going to be small parts its maximum speed is 180 millimeters per second which is pretty darn fast if you compare it to previous versions. The bed is also heated and can go up to 100 Celsius and the nozzle temperature can go up to 260. So it can hit your really high melting point plastics, which means it supports PLA, PETG, TPU 95A, which is Good. Now the software that comes with it, well that's your choice. Whatever G code you create, you can run on this. And there's a little plug there on the side to put your SD card in it. It's not Wi-Fi capable, which is unfortunate, so you can't use Octoprint or something like that to run it. But that's okay, because like I said, it's one of those little machines that you wanna to use to just print what works. However, let's talk about my experience with it. The last printer Creality sent me out of the box Perfect print, straight off the bat, no issues at all. For some reason, this one right here, I had to dial in. I had to adjust the settings, the temperatures to get it just right to print perfectly every time. 
Now, the question is, is this because it wasn't calibrated well out of the factory, or did I get a weird unit? Is this going to be the same experience for everyone else who buys this? Well, I, I really don't know. However, it didn't take me too much to dial in, only about an hour of fiddling around, and also the answers I needed were readily available on forums. So it wouldn't be too much the person who buys a 3D printer, who already knows how to use one and just needs one that's a workhorse that's gonna print well every time after a dial-in, or or it's somebody who's starting off who's going to have to learn a lot of things anyway. The thing I've found with printers who are really great out of the box, people fail to learn how to solve problems in them. Because when you start off printing on really crappy printers, you kind of learn how to solve problems. And when you get to a better printer, all you're getting is better performance knowing what to look out for. This is becoming too easy. And so I think a lot of people are gonna be left in a point where it's like, why isn't it working? It should be working. And so exploring the internet for answers is always recommended. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there and maybe I'll link some below that I follow to help me understand 3D printing and really make the most of it. Now, if you are somebody who's starting off, I think Creality Printers has a great offer, especially in price. All right, let's talk about some of the things we need to dial in. This extruder part here has its own motor that brings in the actual plastic. And their speed here is adjustable, of course. And those settings can be adjusted on the software. So when the system runs the G code, which is the file to print, it can tell you how fast or how slow it feeds this in. Now that feed will mean how fast it extrudes the plastic in here. Then you have to match the heat of the header here to make sure that it warms it enough to make it sticky enough. Putting all that together, we wanna to match the temperature to the plastic that we're using. And most of the time, the plastic has a sticker that says how much range. In this case, the printing range for this is 190 to 230 degrees. Now with this printer right here, I had to turn it up to 210 more than the 200 that's standard for it to really stick. Otherwise, the prints were coming out a little bit messy and falling apart. They weren't sticking and there was things hanging around everywhere. Once I dialed in the heat and that speed right here, that was perfect. Now, the bed temperature is also adjustable. My recommendation is to always clean this with alcohol before and after every print, just to keep it clean. Secondly, the plastic says it's between 25 to 60 degrees. That's a very big range. By default, it goes to around 50, which is good, but I would recommend putting it hotter because once it is on there, you want it to bind to the actual heat bed. And of course, this can come off, so you can bend up your plastic and pull it off. If you get it too hot, it'll melt and it'll reduce the first layer's height and you won't be able to get the next layer nice and straight. And the most impressive part about this printer is how it could print so much without any supports. The entire inside of the car and the roof did not need any supports. Just like the dinosaur you saw before, no supports at all. Printers have got so good to the point where you really don't need supports unless it's something really small and intricate. At 329 Australian dollars, from Creality themselves or JCAR at 349 this is really well priced. Now, as always, Creality throws in a plethora of extras in the box. We get our little SD to USB uh, plug to get your, I don't know, SD card into your computer if you don't have an SD card reader, which is awesome. And inside this package, we get some sample white filament, which is good. We get clips to clip off that filament when it gets too rough. And we've got some tools and adjustments if you need it. Now I've got all my tools, so they're all nicely packaged. But I mean, at the end of the day, these are all the things you need to get started, which is awesome. Now, let me give you my recommendation. 3D printers are not for everyone. However, I think for those teenagers who are learning to tinker with things and want to get into animation and of course design, I think this is really, really cool. Imagine designing something in AutoCAD and then pulling it through and printing it in real life and actually seeing physically what that looks like. If you want to get into building parts for cars, if you want to get into any design, mechanical design, a 3D printer is going to be the best educational toy that you can get your kiddo. And so as I am a young dad now, my kid's only two years old, a 3D printer is, I think, something I can get it for Christmas when they're like, 12, 13, 14, 15, because I think they'll be really excited to see what they can create. And because this printer requires very little maintenance, maybe the initial setup, I think I can highly recommend it as a Christmas gift for your teenager. If you want a workhorse that's just gonna print small things for you, then that's also a good use case. But 
as I grow older, I just see things a little bit differently. So I thought I'd raise that with you guys. So links below where you can grab it. Thanks to Creality for sending this across for review. It's great to see the innovation. What they've really done here is just perfected it in an already good design, bar some out of factory modifications that may be needed to have a tighter screw here and there. In any case, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.